ready. So please, hear the truth. Next, if I came in to buy a unit now, and I looked and I saw a brand new uh, modular, and I said, gee, who lives in there? And I was told, Century, Vi uh, Century Village real estate people. I was like, oh, well, why do they live in there? Oh, no, it's a place of business. Why would I be so impressed by that that I would say, well, by golly, give me a unit now to buy because they got this new unit. It's ridiculous. Finally, we have a building of 1,200 feet, 1,274 feet. In there, we need to squish the paper, the studio, Atlantic Broadband, because we have to worry about them. And don't forget the bathroom, unless we're going to have a little outhouse. So all that has to be put into one 1,274 square feet. We are getting the raw end of the deal. And people cannot always ride their bikes over there. They have to get a bus over there. I don't even know where there's a bus stop over there. I, I haven't ridden on it. And as I said last time, it took me three years to figure out how to get over there. It's, it is not a good trade for us. We come out on the losing end. And as was said before, and I said, Levy always comes out on top. I hear you. Let's do it again. I didn't hear enough. Ed, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And I wish you all a happy new year. My, as I tried to say when I was up here last month, I'm not telling you to or not to vote. But I'm very, very disappointed. We're all sitting here, a lot of us were here last month. There was an overwhelming vote to postpone this vote to when the snowbirds came back. Mr. Israel didn't repeat that. And I was going to get up. I don't care who made the motion. I see Mr. Fausto isn't here. Mr. Fausto rescinded his motion. The object of postponing this was to when more of our residents come back. This is not urgent. It is absolutely not urgent. And I will say, of those of you who don't know, the Camden pool is rehabbed. Mr. Israel said it's going to cost $95,000. Where is the number? Where is a contract telling us how much the Levies are going to spend to rehab our building? It is up to us to postpone this again, as was the intent of postponing it. Not to be browbeated again. I want to remind those who have been here, and those to know who haven't been there, there were two remarks made by Mr. Israel in the past. One, don't put your hands in my pocket. And two, the people that are sitting in front of me are sheeple. Don't be Mr. Israel's sheeple. Postpone this until our residents come back. And it should have been understood, according to our bylaws, our first full meeting is in October. October. Think about it. Dave, David, I'd like to respond to that Thank if you. I could. Uh, go ahead, Eddie. We just had Sebastian explaining to you we're doing a budget that has to be presented for approval in October's meeting. Do you want us to put in the $245,000 to fix the building that could lose its CFO if the people he went to see come out to measure the building and find its condition is in such bad shape? It is in bad shape. I've been there. Donald's been there. We've looked at their conditions. They're incomparable. You, there's no way anyone should work in a building in that case. That's true. They should get out till it's fixed. And that fixing is not going to cost us anything. And if we don't want to do this swap now, then we're going to put enough in the budget to pay for the damages that you've created, Mr. Grossman. I didn't create them. And if Ms. Ryshevsky's here, We've asked to see the original lease. You're saying we have to fix their building. 
Well, where is the lease that says that? I object to you throwing out numbers of $245,000. You have a habit, Ed, a million dollars to remobilize. Oh you know that's wrong. We're here. Another month, more information will come out. I ha we've asked to see an appraisal of the buildings. We were refused. We, I'd like to see how much Mr. Levy is going to put in to rehamp re our building. Just saying it. That's not the way you run a business. Again, it's up to you. Up to you. You want to get screwed again? Don't listen. If you listen to David, who has a habit of doing that. Thank you. Sir. This man is waiting here. Oh, John. Sorry. I usually don't get involved in these squabbles, but that being said, we blew it on the golf course years ago. We blew it on the clubhouse years ago. We blew it on the UCO building like less than 10 years ago. We waste all this money because a few people have it in for Mr. Levy. Mr. Levy is a businessman, just like Yuko is a business, just like everybody else, you know? So uh, I know Mr. Levy, but that's besides the point. If he says he's going to remodel a building for you, he's going to remodel the building for you. You want to spend a quarter of a million dollars to put in another business mobile home? and I'm talking. You want to spend a quarter of a million dollars... You want to spend a quarter of a million dollars of UCO money putting in a business double wide, not counting all the waterworks that's got to be redone underneath it because it's all gone to a seed? Or do you want a nice brand new building with a total brand new inside? If that's the case, then there's only one way to vote. Either you pay the quarter of a million dollars or get a building free, all fixed up. So it is ours. It is going to be yours. It is going to be yours. They're going to switch the deeds. You, it's going to be in writing. It's already been agreed to. All right. F folks, please, let's not turn this into a mob scene. Right. Nice and quiet. Yes, Marilyn. Uh, understood. Uh, uh, understood. Yeah, but the only reason for mentioning those things is the, the concept of not repeating similar mistakes. That's all. Absolutely. Uh, sir. Yeah, good morning. The only issue I have right now is I was on vacation last month, but I did watch the meeting on Channel 95. And uh, during the meeting, I saw where it was tabled, not for any specific time. So my problem, my issue is, as a delegate, I want to do the best for my building and my association that I can. And by being a delegate for the building, I want to know what their ideas are for me to come down here to vote. So I don't have ample time to vote on this today without discussing this with the homeowners who pay all the bills. All right. Obviously, you would abstain if you so if you think that way. This this issue has been out on the table for some time. There has been more than sufficient time. I've sent out thousands of copies. It's been written up in the newspaper. There has been more than enough time and information. All right, Felix. Yeah. No, my I think, name is Felix. I think I'm next. No, you've already spoken, Myron. Okay. Wait till oh, everyone two speaks, two and then, you, wait. And then okay. you can have seconds. Okay. Go my ahead, Felix. My name is Felix Stanko, and I'm the president at Cambridge H, and I'm the one that made the motion to table this to a future date. And the rationale behind this, or uh, that motion last month, was because an argument was going to break out about the appraisal the tax appraisals. And in order to avoid an argument, I figured we'd table it, and that way it could be settled. And I thought David Israel did a good job on Channel 95 about the building swap to try and answer all the questions. 
So I don't know what the problem is here. I think the problem is some of the people. Thank you, Felix. Um, you know, I wasn't going to mention this. I, I, I got Tony's next. And since we're, we're, we're really into this issue of the appraisal, I have an email from uh, Tim Wilmat, who is the chief appraiser. The chief appraiser. He says that the valuation of the buildings is similar, and he thinks the swap is a reasonable idea. Now he, rather than putting it out on the appraiser's email, so it looks very official, it's on the appraiser's email, but he clearly states that that is his personal opinion only, <laughs> not the position of the department. Whoever wrote the prior email spoke out of school. It's as simple as that. So, you, you know, you, you brought this up. It's almost irrelevant because the building you're talking about is probably going to lose its certificate of occupancy. It's old. It's unstable. As, as it was mentioned, the air conditioning was out for um, two weeks. There's an old saying about things like this, good riddance to bad rubbish. Let management spend the money to raise it, because that's what they're going to do. There's no question of trying to rehab it. Let management spend the money to rehab that block, that solid block building over near Southampton. Okay? It will cost the unit owners nothing. It will cost the unit owners nothing. The man does not lie, folks. You may not agree with him, but he does not lie. This is something that will benefit us both. Tony. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, and they say women talk too much. You know? Uh, it was my turn to talk, David. Bottom line is, no offense. Could you have, Get the mic, Tony. Yeah, please. I don't know how to. Sh you shut it off? Did you shut you me off? It. <laughs> okay. You're tell me I'm not work. Okay. Bottom line, folks, no offense. Th this is a no-brainer. Let me explain the situation to you. We own Century Village Realty Building. We own it. They, for whatever reason, the Re Yuko reporter got the center section of the Camden Pool House. When this Camden Pool House became uninhabitable because of um, the way, the certain, the way, uh, the, uh, okay, the way some of the things, the way it was built and the fact that there was uh, chlorine next door, they were literally out of a place to, they could not stay there, okay? So I'm gonna be honest with you. The decision or the, the, the idea of the swap belongs with Barbara Cornish and myself. And we brought it up to an uh, operations committee meeting. And that's how it started. It didn't come from them, it came from us. Because we're looking for some place that the UCO reporter, after all these years, can have a place of their own. Okay? Now, okay, enough. I'm talking, thank you very much. Okay, shut. Shh, shh. Okay, bottom line, I'm talking too loud. He's upset. Okay, bottom line is, we have a very unique opportunity. We own a piece of property that for all intents and purposes, we really don't want. We have no real need for the Century Village Realty Building, okay? What for, Myron? 
To deny them, is this what we're doing it? No, that's not what we're doing. What we really want to do is get a place for the reporter. God Almighty. Okay, sorry. Suffice to say, this is an excellent deal. They will take over for, and we will swap with the maintenance building. The deal is, and they've promised, I see no reason why they shouldn't do it. They will take over the Century Village Realty Building. They will renovate it as, obviously, back to being a realty building where it's actually, you know, it's safe to go in there and it's fit to live in. And in, in, um, in exchange, uh, the Yuko reporter will get the maintenance building uh, rehabbed by the, um, uh, by the realty company and they will take care and pay all the expenses. It will bring up, be brought up to code for, um, for an office occupancy. Okay, I think I'm done. Myron, My please. Try to behave, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm playing, okay, I'll take it, bye. I think I've said, thank you very much. I think, does anybody have? All right, there's been, there's been quite a bit of back and forth on this. Um, now we have folks coming up for seconds. Go ahead, Ed. Again, I'm not saying it's a bad deal. However, however, a quarter of a million dollars, $95,000, don't worry, trust Mr. Levy, we're going to get two buildings. I didn't know Mr. Levy was my partner. As far as I know, we're only getting one building. That is correct. Century Village Real Estate is a business. Yuko is not for profit. It is not a business. It certainly is not being run like a business. Anybody who thinks it is, is a fool. And that's a mild adjective. I am, excuse me, you're out of order. All I want to tell you is, Vote for it if you want, but you've been screwed before, you're going to get screwed again. Thank you. Yes, I'm talking for the second time, and I, I'm very happy that we have so many engineers here, including John, who runs uh, 63, who, who has a figure on how much it's going to cost to fix both buildings. I didn't realize what wonderful talent we had in the village. And Mr. Mr. Lee, Mr. Israel, you're the president, you run the meeting, but you run your mouth off, you don't stop. You don't give anybody else a chance. Uh, My Myron, please. I want the building that the Century Village Real Estate is in now to come back to us, I don't need a vote, they ruined the contract. They took over the other building. They got it. Now we have an, a situation where they have two buildings and we have nothing. Do we have anything right now, Mr. Israel? Myron, you're kind of in the twilight zone. Oh, don't tell we you. already own CV real estate. I know. So and it's I not something to get back. I want we, us to we, take we have a lease with them. To get back is I want possession of the building. We That's have a lease with them that doesn't expire till 2021. You think I'm going to go to court well, you to toss them out of there? You have a copy of that? All right. So wait a minute. So how come they took over the Camden Pool? The building at the Camden Pool. It's not 2021 yet. It's in exchange for only charging $1 a year rent. But they took it over already. They're using it. Of course. And we're not using anything, right? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. What do we got? We're in the clubhouse. 
Oh, we're in the clubhouse. We yes. pay eleven million dollars to be in the clubhouse. Yes. All right. Obviously, the intentions here. Your answers here, are not right. They're the really wrong. Here You're telling lies. Serious question. Could we vote on the motion? Yes. Is it? It's very clear. A few of you simply want to delay this, so we're going to call this question now. All right, I have one, sir. We're calling the I want, question. I, I think this is important. We're call, I think this sir, is important. Sir, we're calling the I question. I think this is important. And you what may happens, sit down. What happens when you abstain from a vote? Is it counted as a no? <sighs> if you want to go back to Magna Carta, he who remains silent is deemed to consent. So be very careful where you go with that. Of look, course, it's not valid here. Look, I have as much right to abstain speak means as you. It, abstain. I have as much right to speak as you. What happens with an abstain vote? It's an abstain vote. Yeah, but are, is there a majority? Sir, sir don't is it delay. A majority don't continue or to a delay. Percentage? Don't delay this is meeting further. Is it a further. majority All right. or is it a percentage? We're going to call the vote. Thank you. Please be seated. Can I give a very quick answer because it's, sure you may. it's very valid. Let's give an example, folks. We've got 150 people, people here. Just for an example, I don't care who abstains. I don't care who votes no. Unless you get 76 yes votes, it doesn't pass. Okay? So as far as an abstention, if you are present and you do not vote, it has the effect of a no vote because you are here and not voting. It does not mean that it's a yes vote. Okay, David? Thank you. All right. Um, all right. How many, how many placards have you picked up? How many? You got eight. So we're still at 1.30. We're okay. We still have a quorum. All right. Um, yes, let's go. Folks, grab your clickers. All right, you see the motion up there on, on the screen. You got two minutes to vote. Is everybody um, pressed a button of their choice? Let it run out. Let it run out. Huh? Let it run out. Okay. All right. All right, we'll let it run out just in case. Don't want to cut somebody off. Thank you all. The motion carries. And thank, thank you to those who brought honest debate to the assembly. Uh, let's go. I'm not aware. Is there any new business to come before delegate assembly? Uh, I suspect we are rapidly losing our quorum. All right. Any new business?
All right. Obviously, we are, we're, we have no Hello. quorum. People, Mr. President, people, people are fleeing. Um, Mr. President, where? Yes, John. I I would just like to say something about Texas. Texas? I, yes. Uh, and yes. Uh, fire. Uh, Phyllis, Re Phyllis had some thoughts fire, on this. Fire rescue went there from Palm Beach. They're one of the best trained people to go down there. Ten volunteers of highly trained firefighters. Don't forget to turn in your clickers, folks. And I would like to make a motion, but I guess it can. No. That we give a donation from Yuko. Phyllis, has, Phyllis has already brought that up, and I had hoped she would have done that, but it's too late now. Um, we'll, we'll do it. And you're beaten or operations or whatever. But I, I have to get approval. You know, I just can't do it. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, Phyllis, you want to uh, talk? I mean, everybody's fleeing. Flee not. All I want to say <laughs> is don't be scared. Be prepared, because if this little storm that's brewing hits us, we're going to need to help each other, and we're going to need to have all the help that we need. Uh, as far as the donations, I've been in touch with some of the organizations in Texas, and what they are asking us to do is give locally. First, I thought we would collect and send the checks out the way we did after Katrina. This village donated $2,500 to many different organizations after Katrina. But when I spoke to some of the people in Texas, they said, please give locally. So if you want to write a check to the Red Cross, bring it to the Red Cross.